नमस्ते आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक अबाउट स्टैंडर्ड एंड यूनिवर्सल सेफ्टी प्रिकॉशंस माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर गीता जोशी आई एम चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर ऑफ कम्युनिटी ऑन्कोलॉजी सेंटर एंड हॉस्पिस कॉम्प्लेक्स इन अहमदाबाद यूनिवर्सल प्रिकॉ वर्क प्रिकॉशंस आर द प्रिकॉशंस वन एज टू टेक when they are working in a healthcare scenario whether they are he he or she is a doctor nurse a paramedics or a volunteer or a psychologist or any of the team member of palliative care team has to learn about this universal work precautions to protect themselves from various types of infection precautions consistently used for all patients regardless of their blood borne infection status whether patient has blood borne infection or not you have to take this precaution to protect yourself all blood and body fluids to be considered potentially infectious for hiv hbsag hiv hbv and hcv that is hepatitis viruses so you may not be knowing the status of the blood of the patient but you have to take precaution so that you consider the patient is having hiv or hepatitis all instruments material that has come in contact with blood cons- considered contaminated and must be properly handled cleaned and sterilized or disinfected or safely disposed of universal precautions are intended to prevent accidental parenteral mucous membrane and non intake skin exposure to healthcare workers other patients and relatives volunteers visitors cleaners and waste handlers and thereby society and environment at, at large these precautions are not only for yourself but it is also for the people who come in contact with you or patient so you are taking precaution ag- at, at, at for the society at large routine and mandatory testing of patients for hiv antibody or hepatitis b and c is not an effective strategy for controlling the transmission of infection so if uh, it is not possible to screen all the patient for hiv or hepatitis frequently so there are window periods or some periods during which the patient may have contracted infection and it can transmit to you if you don't take any precaution so body fluid to which universal precaution apply are blood all other body fluids containing visible blood gastric content csf that is cerebro spinal fluid pleural peritoneal or pericardial fluid synovial fluid amniotic fluid stool urine vomitus sputum and sweat of the patient semen and vaginal secretion these are the all secretions or body fluid and blood which needs universal precaution standard precaution for all patients first and foremost this we have seen during the covid period also that hand washing is absolutely fantastic and number one step to be taken to protect yourself from any infection so wash hands promptly after touching the infective material suppose you have touched the urine of the patient or vomitus then firstly you wash hands use no touch technique when possible to avoid touching infective material if you have to in- touch the vomitus or so you collect it in a bowl or use some clothes where you don't come in t- uh, contact with it wear gloves when in contact with blood body fluid secretions excretions and contaminated items clean up spills of infective material prop- promptly 
if the patient's infective material falls on the floor, then you have or uh, any surface, you have to clean up immediately. If spillage with infected material that is example blood, sputum, body fluid et, etcetera occurs, then what you have to do? Firstly, you clean and wipe the surface using 0.5 to 1 percent sodium hypochloride or household bleach. So, you spread this uh, hype household bleach or sodium hypochlorite on that spillage and around the spillage. Leave it for 30 minutes, then you one should wear the gloves and clean and dispose of the waste which is generated. Ensure that patient care equipment, supplies and linen contaminated with infective material is de disinfected or sterilized between each patient use. Suppose you, if uh, it is a some uh, some material which you are using or linen you are using from one patient to another patient either you disinfect it or sterilize it. Use dressing and other waste are properly disposed of. Dressing material when removed from the patient should always be disposed of properly. Linen soil with infective material can be boiled and no reuse of syringe and needle. Now, everybody knows that it is a part of universal precaution and no doctor or paramedic staff should reuse the syringe needle. What are the universal work precaution? First of all, barrier precaution means uh, uh, a healthcare worker or a volunteer or a paramedics should wear protecting gown, gloves, cap, mask like that. Second is hand washing, third is safe handling of sharps. If sharp instrument like needle, knife are uh, used in the patient, you have to handle it so carefully that you do not injure yourself. Safe handling of specimen, any blood collection or urine or stool collection is done from the patient, it should be handled properly. So, your hand does not get contaminated or it does not fall on the ground or on floor and contaminate the surface. Safe handling of blood and body fluid spills and use of disposable sterile item and safe techniques. Uh, mechanical uh, pipetting. Nowadays, previously in laboratory they used to use pipette uh, which was uh, used through mouth and now there is a mechanical pipette is available. Immunization, one should always take vaccine against hepatitis. It is commonly done for all the healthcare worker. Coming to barrier protection. One has to wear gloves, laboratory gown, facial protection and occlusive bandage. Gloves, whenever you are likely to come in contact with patients blood or body fluid or secretion, you should wear gloves. If you are going to do a wound care, mouth care or catheter care, then also you have to use gloves. Disposing of the laboratory waste, you have to use gloves and heavy duty latex gloves for handling the infected glassware or biomedical waste. Gown is must for all laboratory technicians, for doctors, nurses who are working continuously with the patient. Facial protection, there are uh, many types of facial protection, mask, protective glow, uh, glasses, triple layer mask. Now, everybody is very familiar with different types of mask and uh, this is to be worn during the surgical procedure or any intervention you are taking up with the patient and of course, it will give protection against various types of viruses and bacteria. When there is an open wound, healthcare worker or volunteer with open wounds. Suppose healthcare worker or volunteer has a open wounds on their own hands. So, they are likely to that wound is likely to get infected if 
it is not proper precaution is taken. So, sh should not in such people should not handle blood and body fluid except when wound is small and can be covered with waterproof dressing hands should be washed with soap and water immediately after exposure to secretion or by after touching the patients. This is the type of uh, bandage occlusive bandage it is called or it is waterproof bandage it is uh, applied on the small cut or uh, injury over the uh, in your on your hands when you are going to see the patient or you are going to do, uh, do any procedure on the patient. While taking blood collection also or laboratory staff or nurses who do who are involved in blood collection or even volunteers who are trained they do take such procedure whenever required then you have to protect your hands with gloves. So, that the blood of the patient does not come in contact with your hands and if you have any injury on your hands you are likely to get infected. Barrier precaution you can see in the picture a paramedics has worn a cap there is a hood, then there is a mask, then there is a gloves, then there is a gown covering from the neck up to the ankle joint and there are boots which are you can see boots here which are worn by a doctor or nurse when they are going to work with a infected patient or when uh, they are uh, going for surgery or any intervention procedure. See the again it is described in this diagram thick gloves, mask, long sleeve shirt or gown or, or you can one can wear even plastic apron. So, your any blood body fluid uh, will if, even if it is spilled off on your body the plastic apron will protect your clothes and your skin from it, trousers and boots. Hand washing every one of us has learnt following covid period and that is the most ideal safety precaution. Everyone one has learnt how to apply soap for how long which area to be scrubbed and all, but we will revise it. First of all you wash your hands thoroughly in running water and soap without missing any area and must this is must after contamination with blood and body fluids and after removing gown gloves before eating drinking and leaving the lab. So, even if you are taking uh, have worn barrier barriers to protect yourself like gloves and gown, but after end of procedure when you remove blood and uh, uh, gloves and gown you have to do hand washing. Hand washing before wearing the gloves and after taking out the gloves it is must. Liquid soap dispensers are ideal because they are not contaminated the uh, solid soap which we use is likely to get contaminated. And even if you are using soap bar it should be dry, it should be clean and dry tray and this tray should be clean and dried every day. These are the steps to hand washing, first of all wash your palms and fingers, wash back of, back of the hands, wash fingers and knuckles wash thumbs, wash finger, finger tips and wash wrist, these are the areas you have to cover. First of all wet your hands, apply soap or uh, liquid soap or solution for scrub, scrub for at least 15 seconds 
and with all different movements of hands and finger, then rinse your hand in running water, turn off the water, water uh, tap also should have a lever, so which you can close, turn off with your uh, elbow and dry it with a paper towel. Frequently missed areas of the hands is shown over here, like tips of finger, thumbs, they, uh, here we miss, miss to scrub properly. So, you have to take care and scrub this area adequately. Here again the same picture is repeated, you can see the running water rub the hands, rubbing the fingers in between, rubbing the fingers at back of the hands, rubbing the fingers with tip of the hands, tip of the fingers, rubbing the thumbs and rub each wrist, wrist is the area which you are, you are likely to miss, especially when we are wearing some ornaments or watch. In that case, you have to remove the watch or ornament you are wearing and rub this area up to the wrist joint very uh, well or very properly and that will prevent the spread of infection. There are types of hand wash. The ultimate and the best hand wash needs to be done is because a surgical hand wash before going for surgery. What we are doing is a social hand wash. So, whenever uh, social hand wash is done before eating, before and after nursing the patient, after visit to toilet and whenever hands are soiled by anything. And after COVID we have learned that whenever we are, we come, come at home, we, we uh, arrive from outside then you have to wash your hands. Second is hygienic hand wash, it is done with the certain antiseptic solution like savlon, alcohol, povidone, iodine and after contact with blood before doing invasive procedure carrying immunocompromised ca patient like cancer patient or kidney disease patient, kidney transplant patient before and after use of gloves, then this is done for 25 seconds and surgical hand wash is done with the soap or detergent or a, uh, a scrub, it is a uh, antiseptic scrub and at least twice with what warm water and up to elbow. Surgical hand wash is done up to elbow and other plain hand wash and hygienic hand wash is done up to wrist joint. Now, uh, I will explain the procedure to clean up all the spills. Suppose you are carrying a lab sample of a blood from HIV patient. You do not know the HIV status or whatever, but the sample contains blood of a patient and accidentally that blood vial falls on the floor and there is a spillage of blood on the floor and it will contaminate the floor. What you will do? If for some reason blood has fallen on the floor, it must be covered by tissue paper and soak with disinfectant and leave it for 30 minutes. First you cover the site with the tissue paper and spread the disinfectant solution on the, um, on the tissue paper and around it and leave it for 30 minutes. Then a staff should wear heavy duty gloves and mop the blood, blood spot along with the disinfectant, mop that area. Finally, floor is clean with detergent and water in usual way. Ordinary bleach bleaching powder which comes, it can be also used as a disinfectant. In this one liter of water, you have to add 
bleaching powder. Most important is that if you are taking up a work in palliative care either as a volunteer or as a paramedic or as a nurse or as a psychologist you must and you are likely to visit hospital frequently and come in contact with the patients then you must immunize yourself. So, healthcare workers volunteers should be immunized for hepatitis B vaccine and play a, a key role in prevention and transmission of hepatitis B. So, these are the precautions one has to learn practice to protect themselves as well as community and society. Suppose you do not take precaution and you are caught with some viral infection from your patient after going home you are likely to transmit that infection to your loved ones. You must have seen that during covid period healthcare workers were uh, isolated for 5 days, 10 days after working in the covid ward that is to prevent transmission or infection from the patient to healthcare worker and from the healthcare worker to the normal people in the society. So, this is the way you, you by protecting yourself, you are protecting society, your family, your neighbors and society at large. Thank you very much.